Okay, so talking a little bit about um, levels of consciousness um, and everything, everything, is, everything is so important around uh, where one is vibrating at and um, so when I was in, when I was, and also uh, I'm a member of several 12-step uh, fellowships so you get to know what your weaknesses are I mean, each, each individual has their weaknesses or their Achilles heels, you know. Some it might be romantic relationships, some it might be food, some it might be work and money. Um, so, uh, so, so some people are shopaholics. So there's various different things that one does that can pull one off one's uh, vibration. So when I was in active addiction, and if you're in active addiction, you tend to, like, the more you're in addiction, the more you pick up secondary and third addictions to sort of pull you down. Uh, and they all go into these fields of um, chaos and unmanageability. They're anti-life. They're life uh, destructing. So as one becomes more, as one picks up the addictions, one's ego becomes more inflated. One becomes more disconnected from uh, the, the light of consciousness, shall we say. And as one goes into the darkness, uh, these fields of anti-life or self-destruct go, and you can pick up. Uh, and for each individual, they'll have um, various things that they they'll have a tendency towards going. So it's really important to not let you know if you've done a lot of work to increase your vibration through spiritual work, uh, not to let these drop. I mean, it's okay to let them drop, and you can pick them up again. But um, all of life, all of life is unfolding. You know, there is like a, a, one, once you go to these higher vibrations, it's like the miraculous synchronicities of the universe uh, tend to be supportive. One of the hallmarks of get, going to these higher vibrations is that the externals become less interesting. Uh, they tend to hook you in less and less. So one is more in the in the presence or the flow. So um, so everything is spontaneously happening in the now. But uh, as one's vibration drops, the tendency for um, fantasy or obs obsession or things being meaningful to the ego start to start to predominate. And that that's one thing. And as one drops more, then these thoughts or obsessions can happen, can act out in behaviours, which are then, uh, you know, and choices, which stem out of the energy field. On a certain level, you know, we can, you can see it as you become synced to the, to the level of consciousness. Like uh, a simple example would be like if I was, um, if I'm in, if I'm vibrating at the vibration of addiction. Uh, you know, like if I was vibrating at the level of addiction, I'd be like obsessed with donuts. I'd be like, you know, trying to eat donuts, thinking about donuts, or that then may lead me into another thing. It might lead me into um, overspending on money and financial unmanage unmanageability around money and chaotic decisions around money. So that you know, it's like, you know, I start to vibrate in all these unmanageable fields. So. Hence the thing of like being uh, being on guard, and anyone, it's like whenever now whatever vibration you're at, you know you need to be mindful as to what vibration you're dropping down to. So if um, let's say someone's in is a um, is a love addict, then um, uh, then the, you know. Uh, that can lead into financial manageability. Also, as these, as the vibration drops, as the vibration drops, also you could say it's a correlation to un unconsciously or vibratorily choosing money situations and romantic relationships which match that lower vibration. So, where, as you're going lower in vibration, basically. If you're going to choose a job, you probably choose a more destructive job. If you're going to make financial decisions, if you have to hire a builder, you probably you know, choose. Uh, you know, you you'll meet um, you'll meet a builder who you'll choose who will be unmanageable and will waste your money. 
you'll think of good, you'll think of opportunities which you think are good which will end up badly. Or if you're going to choose a romantic partner, you'll probably choose one which uh, is just a correlation of the reflection of the field that you're in. So the lower the vibration, the lower it goes. So hence the thing of not allowing one, well, it's, it's to one's benefit not to allow oneself to drop. Now if one does drop, as soon as you, you go into these things, like let's say you, you go into financial unmanageability or if you go into a disruptive romantic relationship, it's to realize, A is to, well there's various things to realize. One is like, you, you need to see specifically what pulled you out. Exactly, if you were at a high level of, you know, you're at a high vibration, now you've been pulled down, wherever you are, if you get pulled down to a low vibration, what pulled you out? You know, and was it uh, was it a choice? Was it um, a financially unmanageable choice? Now the thing is with the ego is it tends to think in terms of causality, but often these you know causality or making the actual physical choice is usually a lot later down on the line. Usually one's vibration had dropped, and one's guardianship, shall we say, of a higher vibration had dropped some time earlier, and then and then the choices stem out of that. So it's like, um, and there's a, the, you know, like I'm trying to help someone at the moment with regular check-ins, um, you know, like on an app every hour, like to check in and just to connect with the observer or, or to do A Course of Miracles lesson. So usually if you're doing that, you'll find that life is, has a certain level of manageability and flow and presence to it. And then suddenly one will think, well, life's so great, I don't need to do that any longer and then one will stop and one will still feel good for a long period of time and then suddenly it will be like one's choices uh, it could be around money or relationships will start to to go down and then you know and then it will seem to the ego that one makes choices now but one's vibration has already dropped that are stemming from that so once you're hooked in you, you know you need to sort of see how you got hooked in and go through the withdrawal for letting go of uh, of what one had hooked into that pulls you down. Usually when you drop a vibration, you've picked on a illusory idea that you, you, you've uh, projected magical qualities or specialness onto something. Then, then that, if you like, takes up more ego space or head space and that lets the, the vibration drop. So in terms of what it is that pulls you out, uh, I'm not saying that you have to let things go, but in terms of how the ego projects meaning onto things, uh, that then lowers the vibration. So if you just go, like let's say um, there's a lot of financial unmanageability, then, uh, or if there's a lot of fear around money, for example, then the th the first the, one of the first things I would let go of is the, the belief systems and the fear. Um, so the energy of fear, I mean, let's say one is having financial unmanageability, is just to sit with the fear and empty that fear out just by sitting with the feelings until you get to peace or in waves. So that will increase your vibration. And see what the, how the ego is doing it. Like it could be like, for example, um, one is uh, foreseeing cash flow problems. Um, so you, you could... Uh, you, you have to see how the ego is holding it. Is it like I cancel my belief that I'll run out of money, I'm an infinite being, or I cancel my belief, uh, I, I cancel my belief in scarcity. But usually there'll be specific thoughts which are running through the person's mind, and you have to see what those repeated thoughts are, and those are the beliefs. So if it's like uh, I always run into trouble, or uh, things always go bad after a few months, whatever the specific beliefs are. You want to cancel those specific beliefs as opposed to just say, I cancel my belief in scarcity or lack. So, because those will be the specific beliefs which are running like software for the individual. So you want to be like, like, a, like a surgeon, you want to specifically cut them out through cancelling them. Or, the other way to do it is as those limiting beliefs pop into mind, um, is to go to the observer of them. So as these uh, thoughts pop into mind, oh, you know, I won't have enough money to pay the rent. 
um, then you go, and as that fear arises and that thought starts to build up, you go, well, what's observing this? What's observing that thought and that feeling? And is the observer of that fearful thought, is the observer in fear? And is the observer subject to that thought that's arising in consciousness? And if the observer is uh, mingled in with the fear and the limiting thought, then is there, is there an observer observing that observer which is worried about the fear? So each time you go to the observer of this, it's like diluting, it's like releasing some of the fear and also taking some of the power out of that repeating fearful money thought. So you dissolve it, you can dissolve it through the observer or through cancelling of beliefs. And that, you know, that type of thing, you know, it can also, sometimes with money, it can be like, um, it, can, it can be, it, sometimes it can be due to um, a relationship things that could be going on. You know, there could be an unforgiveness that, uh, that one needs to release, or there could be a fear around um, expecting the universe to bail you out, or some, something could be going on. So you want to release those. In the, um, yes, as well, you know, um, as, as money things go down, as, as you pull into anything that pulls you down in vibration, whether it be financial unmanageability, whether it be a bad romantic relationship, whether it be alcohol, whether it be over, overspending, uh, the fields become more unmanageable and more destructive. So immediately the things to do are to find out what it is that you're picking up that's pulling your vibration down and then being willing to if you're not able to let it go the act the the behavior out at least let go of your thinking around it even if you're going to carry on doing it how is your ego getting really sort of um, really stuck into this situation so they can't let it go so let's say um, you know, you, you, for example, with money, you still have to pay your bills. You can't like, uh, well, you could move to Tibet and, and hope, hope the um, the universe will provide. You might do if you're a holy man and have a little <laughs> little empty bowl. And people might feed you, so that's a possibility as well. But otherwise, if you're going to carry on paying your bills, is to um, apart from taking actions, just let go of the fear, or cancel the beliefs, go to the observer. It's always the case, in my experience, that as you go to these fields of infinite trust and presence, that everything will work out. You know, the universe, once you're in these states of absolute presence and flow, uh, it's always been my experience that the universe will take care of you. And, even, and, even, and the ego, even if it didn't get what it thought it needed, would still be fine. Uh, so uh, there'd be this trust, and even if the thing that didn't come something else would come to support you. So it's like, you know, there could be fear that, oh, I need like 800 pounds to pay the mortgage. It might be that, you know, if you're in a place of infinite peace and stillness and trust, and even if you didn't have the 800 pounds, you'd be fine and the universe would still look after you, even if it, if it wasn't that specific thing. You'd probably find a friend would look after you, or you'd find some other place to support you. If it was um, a bad, um, a bad um, relationship, if you let it go and you're in this place of infinite trust, either you'd be fine with that one or the universe would provide a better one. But it's all a reflection of the vibration. So I would just, just, um, just let go of whatever it is that your, your ego is hooking into. What thoughts are you thinking? Because you don't want to be hooking into any thoughts uh, at all. So things should be coming out of the infinite field in the present moment. But if they're coming out more of out of an obsessive field, out of a thinking field, then you're going to, the more you're going into what I call a personal identified field, um, then the lower your vibration is going. <coughs> your ego's thinking it has to work it out, it's the centre of the universe, and its thinking is going to bring everything that needs. And when you get into these infinite states of flow, uh, you become part, you become one with the universe, so you get spontaneous actions and thoughts and there's, a, and there's a field of infinite trust, and actually it also correlates when there's infinite trust, the universe infinitely looks after you uh, as well. So you're, you're in the oneness field, or the infinite field, or the limitless field, and the more you get into the thinking field, the personal field, um, you'll find the more difficult life becomes, because you're 
operating more out of fear and separation as opposed to oneness and infinite trust or presence. Um, yes, so if it's like, um, if, if the ego is holding, let, let's take it, the ego is holding on to, into, onto a relationship was not ideal. If, a, if the ego is holding on to a relationship which at some level is known as not ideal, then it's obviously coming out of uh, a level of fear. There's a level of fear that if I let go of all of my thinking and all of my attachment to this relationship, I'll not be looked after. And so the ego and the ego is projecting some kind of magical status that somehow this thing is giving life and comfort and support. Or it may be offering a distraction because life is getting um, uh, difficult. So the thing that I do, if it's around money or a relationship or whatever it is, is that it's not necessarily, I'm not necessarily saying you need to let it go, but I want to let go of my projections around it. You know, it's not necessarily that I want to like throw all my money and burn it, but I want to let go of the, my ego's associated meanings and attachments and projections around it so that it's meaningless, so that it has no value, so that I can be in that infinite state of presence and in the flow state. If my ego's holding on to any kind of meaning to it, then it can get obsessed around it and it's going to block this state of inf you know, being one with the universe and in the, in the flow state. So I want it to have nothing. So I'd be like, I cancel my belief in money. I'm an infinite being subject only to what I hold in mind. Also, it's to know, like, if, it, if it's around money or if it's a relationship. Like, if one looks back into one's, um, into, into one's um, memory bank, what, things that one, that, has to, that is totally neutral or meaningless, one operates with, with, with maximum capacity. Like, if, if I have to go in and buy a pencil, I'm very, very sane because it's meaningless, it's neutral. You know, if I have to have a cup of tea, you know, it's, it's a meaningless thing. So I can make a cup of tea without it occupying any mental space. You know, I, I can be in a state of flow and presence while making a cup of tea. I can buy a pencil, you know, without it breaking my presence and the state of flow. But as soon as the ego is holding projected meaning on something, then my, my, my vibration is going to drop. So I don't, I don't want my ego to hold on to any vibration because then the universe can't take care of me because my ego is now like hooked in with fear and, and, and projections onto this thing. It's now going to clog up that infinite presence that I could be in. So it's not that you, don't, you, don't need, you can't have these things, but it is that I don't, for myself, I don't want them to be blocking up. And actually it's like when you're not obsessed around money and how you're going to make money and whether you're going to pay the rent, you know, the, then you're one with the universe and the universe provides and you intuitively know what to do and how to handle it. But, you know, people are from childhood, from culture, you know, we're programmed with all of these beliefs which we let go, but it's like letting those go. So, when I, so for me, I don't want my ego to have any payoff out of, out of things. I want to let that go through the cancelling of beliefs or, going, or just going to the observer. Another great thing to do, like if it's, um, if it's uh, a fantasy that I have around a romantic thing, then is to go to the observer of the fantasy. If I just keep going to the observer of it, or what's the detached observer of it, then this person or this fantastical image, you know, starts to lose its power. Or if it's money as well, just going to the observer of it. Uh, and I quickly go uh, on into this thing of, uh, so how do you, how, okay. How do you do the observer? Is just to find out, like, if I've got a fantasy, what's observing the fantasy? Is the observer, is the observer of the fantasy interested in the fantasy? Or if I have fear around money, uh, I have fear, the emotion of fear and the thoughts, I can't pay the rent this month, there's a thought. So what's, a, is the observer of that thought and the fear in fear or worried about paying the rent? So, in doing that, you, dis you, you get to the infinite field where there's... Because um, one, once you're the observer of the fear and the thought, then the observer has, you know, is, is actually present 
and it, those things can't exist because they're not they don't exist now so those things vanish if you're having um, uh, a fantasy obsession the observer of the fantasy obsession you know the, the if it's a fantasy obsession around George Clooney or whoever it is you know the observer is not interested in that it just disappears because that's just an ego identification it doesn't exist in the now you know only only what's here now is now so there there isn't any space and that's the infinite field so what i'm trying to say is if i if if my ego holds on to anything i'm like i want to completely let it go and this is the thing you know i've been reflecting on uh, one of my you know i, I love buddha uh, one of Buddha's ideas that you know I can never be free unle unless of suffering and old age and death unless I'm willing to let go of all of my attachments or the investments or the projected meanings that I'm holding on to within my ego just to be willing to let those go and, tr and trust the universe.